The Terps win. You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. And the Maryland Terrapins win 31 to 9 over a talented Michigan State Spartans team. The Maryland Terrapins move to 4 and 0 and 1 and 0 in Big Ten play and one of in the first Big Ten play game of the year. And the Maryland Terrapins win 31 to 9 over the Michigan State Spartans. It's time to celebrate. It's a little post game coverage that we will now have after the game, but let's celebrate the Maryland Terrapins win over a Michigan State team. The first time we've gone to Michigan State since 1950 and beat Michigan State. We have not beaten them at their place in East Lansing since 1950. Yes, I heard it on the broadcast and I knew I wanted to use that stat. I didn't know that, but that's been a long time since we have beaten the Michigan State Spartans. But now we are here and Coach Loxley is absolutely changing the program around we're four and oh headed into the indiana game with the first third part of our schedule out of the way i'm not gonna act like it's the hard part of the schedule it's the easy part but finally maryland is just winning games we're winning games that we're supposed to be winning and the program we have a chance to add on another win and coach loxie has a chance to improve on winning Every single year, which he has done as the Maryland Terrapins win. So we get to go from seven wins two years ago to eight wins last year to maybe nine wins this year with picking up a 4-0 start. But let's talk about the game a little bit. This is post-game coverage. We covered the spread of 7.5, which honestly, I went on here and said, I'm unsure if the Maryland Terrapins will cover the spread. But we covered the spread by a good amount. I thought 7.5 was a little bit high for being on the road, for being at Michigan State, for being in our first Big Ten play, for being in that atmosphere. I thought it was a little bit big of a little bit big of a line and a little bit big of a spread, but the Maryland Terrapins covered that 7.5 spread. And finally, what did we do that I've been begging us to do that we haven't done the last couple of weeks? And I don't know why, but we haven't been able to do it against a lesser opponent, even teams worse than Michigan State. Michigan State's probably the best team that we've played yet. But against other teams, we have gotten off to such a, slow starts this is one of the first games of the year that we have started actually pretty fast we got up we went up 14 to 0 finally we've been going down 14 to 0 so it was nice not to have to sweat it out the whole entire game and think are we even going to be able to come back in this game what is going on why are we going off to a slow start but credit to coach Loxley to having the guys ready to play and I think that a lot of that has to do with the coaching staff because I talked about it I thought other teams that we played in the past couple weeks have had a better script going into the Maryland game a better offensive script in the first couple plays you know in offensive installs when you're going over the game plan for the week and everything you put in plays for the specific game and I thought Maryland was Getting beat in terms of coaching staff, I thought Virginia's coaching staff did a better job of putting in plays against us, and I thought Charlotte did a better job of putting in plays against us than we did, and then we did in putting in plays for playing against them. So I thought the Maryland Terrapins did a better job at that. So credit to the coaching staff and the Terps' defense is continuously forcing turnovers. Again, Bo Braid in his first game back after the injury missed last week's game against Virginia, and we definitely miss his leadership overall on the defensive side of the ball. But Bo Braid was back, and he made his presence known almost right away when he forced the interception on one of the first plays of the game for the Maryland Terrapins. So Bo Braid is absolutely back and looking good for the Maryland Terrapins. And then Tarheeb still, who had two interceptions last week, was not done. Tarheeb was not done at all. Had 
another interception later on in the game for the Maryland Terrapins. So the Terps are forcing turnovers. And then Donald Brown. Donald Brown has just been a turnover machine as like a defensive end outside linebacker type. He has two picks already on the year, but added another forced fumble on the year. So Donald Brown has absolutely surprised me. I don't know how he's doing it, but he is just forcing turnovers every game. And he did it again against Michigan State in East Lansing at 3.30. He did it again. So Donald Brown, we I'm not expecting him to force a turnover every game, but it seems like he's starting to do that with he had – a pick last game. He had a pick a game before. He just continues to force turnovers, and I love that. That is exactly what the Maryland Terrapins need is for someone to force interceptions. But honestly, I want to stay on the topic of the turnovers a little bit because I don't think it's realistic for us to continue to force the amount of interceptions that we are currently forcing. I don't think that's a realistic standard to keep up. I don't think that will stay for the Maryland Terrapins. So what does that mean? We need to be better off in other phases of the ball, like running the ball, like not turning over the ball ourselves. Talia did have an interception today, but we have to be better off in those sides of the ball because it's not realistic to win the turnover battle by three every week. We did it this week. We did it last week. We're clearly winning the turnover margin, but when we play like in Ohio State, we play like in Michigan, and what if we're down one in the turnover margin, and we have to make a play, or the defense has to get us, it's just not realistic to continue to go on this trend of force turnovers, obviously we can be a defense that is really good at forcing turnovers, but like, it's not going to stay linear in every game, we're just forcing more turnovers, it's just, it's then the, our opponent, it's just not going to happen, it's just not realistic, but it's great that we're doing it, but we need to still make sure that we're doing everything else right and not depending on those turnovers. Because against Virginia, I don't know what happens if Tarheeb still doesn't get that interception in the end zone when it's 21 to 14. I don't know what happens if we don't win the turnover margin by a lot against Michigan State. I don't know. They might be able to stay in the game. They might score more points. It might be a closer game if their quarterback doesn't throw as many picks. Doesn't They don't turn over the ball. They don't fumble a kickoff like it might just be a closer game overall so I don't want us to start depending on those turnovers for the rest of the game or for the rest of the season but overall I thought Talia played pretty well nothing special nothing bad went 21 to 36 for 223 yards three touchdowns one interception I talked about the one interception um but he had multiple turnover worthy plays if you're familiar with PFF pro football focus where they grade out each players and they do it a system grading that's a little bit differently. They count for turnover worthy play. So if the defense drops the interception, then they'll count that as turnover worthy play. And so Tlee had he had turnover worthy plays that just can't happen for the Maryland Terrapins. Um because he had like one where he overthrew a guy in the seam and the Michigan State almost intercepted it, but it bounced right off the player and we got lucky. So those need to be cleaned up a little bit, but it was he had one interception on the day, so I'm not going to go crazy over that. But 21 to 36 for 223 yards and three touchdowns is not bad at all. He started hot, but he slowed down. I think when the scripted plays went down, I thought he didn't play it as well, but I thought he still had a really good game. He got a little bit nicked up during the game, too. I was a little bit nervous because he took a hit on the sideline, and I wasn't sure, and it looked like he may have been hurt, but it looks like he's okay now, and it looks like the Maryland Terrapins are ready to go, and Talia is ready to go into the next week against Indiana. In terms of the wide receiver room, I want to talk about Ty Felton. Starting to really prove himself, the junior wide receiver. I talked about him off season. I talked about it was projecting though. I said he can be one of our best wide receivers, and he might be too talented not to play. And I think that he has burst onto the scene, and it's clear now he's a top three wide receiver in terms of production, in terms of snap count. I talked about it last week. I said Ty Felton was the number one wide receiver last week and against Virginia in snap count. That includes Jayshon Jones. That includes Tyree Chambers. That includes Kane Prather. That includes the whole wide receiver core. He was the number one wide receiver in terms of snap count. So Ty Felton led our team in receiving this year with, I mean, this game with three catches for 67 yards. And he's proving that he's a top three wide receiver in that room, like I said, in terms of production and in terms of snap count. So I'm looking at Ty Felton now as a top three wide receiver, and I think he's a perfect mold. I think with Jay Sean Jones inside and Tyree Chambers playing some inside, some outside, and then you have Ty Felton 6'2 on the outside and Kaden Prather 6'4 on the outside. 
I love that look. And then Octavian Smith, a changeup in there. I love how the wide receiver room. I was listening to some of the pregame show, and they were and they said Maryland's passing offense is one of the best in the country. Which, I mean, I I think it is. I think it's like top twenty five in terms of pass offense. I think our wide receiver group is. I think Talia is a top fifteen quarterback in the country. But to hear like an actual analyst give us a top passing game in the country is interesting because they don't usually say that about the Maryland Tapers. We don't get that type of credit. But it was nice to hear an analysts say that Maryland's a top wide receiver core and top quarterback passing game overall in the country. But the running back room, I don't know what to say about the running back room. It's a little bit interesting right now. Roman Hemby had a pretty bad game for Roman Hemby standards for any running back standards. He had 10 carries for 12 yards at 1.2 average. He looked a little bit slow, looked a little bit, I don't know if he was nicked up or something, something we didn't really know about. Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe the offense line just wasn't blocking well enough, but he averaged 1.2 yards per carry. That shouldn't really happen for Roman Hemby. He's too good of a player to too talented second on Mo Kuyper's big board in terms of running back, but he won't stay there if he continues to do do put up performances like that. But again, Colby McDonald was the hero of the group with five carries for 38 yards and a 7.6 average. So Colby McDonald looked really good for the Maryland Terrapins. And I said, I was like, Colby McDonald has to be running back too at this point because he's putting up so many good games. He averages like 7.7 or 8 yards per carry now on the season, almost 8 yards per carry. He's our leading, he's our leading in yards this game. And he just looks like he's playing the best. So eventually you look at him, you're like, oh, he's the junior of the group. Oh, the rest of them are young and more talented. That's how we looked at it. We overshadowed him. I overshadowed him going into the year. I didn't think he was going to do much. He way overboned my perception of what I thought he was going to do. I said, I'll be happy if he gets 100 yards on the year. No, he's looking like he can be our second running back. Anton Littleton played fine today. Nothing crazy, but had a solid game. It was good in short yardage. Had nine carries for 33 yards. But I was like, I said it a couple games ago. I was like, hold off on the Kobe McDonald at running back two thing. I think Anton Littleton still has that. But now that I'm more into it, he has to be running back two. And I don't want to say he's pushing Roman Hemby for running back one, but like he's pushing Roman Hemby for running for more carries, not running back one, but just for more carries. But next game, we need to see Roman Hemby play better. But Kobe McDonald just continue to do what you're doing but we were clearly better than Michigan State so there's a new kind of standard of the program where I think we're starting to approach we're not in Ohio State we're not a big three type of program yet and everything's going to change next year with Oregon you saw what they did today against Colorado they're coming in Washington you saw what they did last week against Michigan State they're coming into the conference. Everything's going to kind of change as soon as we got comfortable and it looks like we're going the right direction it's all going to change next year when all those schools coming to the Big Ten, UCLA, USC, all those schools are coming. But right now, it looks like we are like a really solid upper echelon, middle of the pack Big Ten team, which I think is where we want to be. So I'm interested to see if we continue to do well and we're able to get to nine, maybe 10 wins on the season. 10 wins would be a great mark, but I think we're going in the right do- direction. But we're going to be talking about the game all week. I'll give an offensive and defensive MVP on Monday, and I can't wait to talk more about the game. So please like and subscribe. Thank you for listening to a little post game action from Locked on Terps, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Locked on Terps.